Are you looking for a cheaper auto bed leveling system than the BL Touch? Well, today we're testing all the way from France, the Touch Me. I really like auto bed leveling, and I know an experienced user can level the bed to the point where it remains consistent for quite a few prints, but I just really like the convenience. The way I can change build surfaces, the way I can change the Z offset to get that first layer, and the way that I don't need to worry about bumping the bed and upsetting my results. Now I've made guides before on the Easy ABL and several guides on the BL Touch, but I'd like to try something different. Therefore, I thought I'd test out the Touch Me. The Touch Me is sold from the website Hot Ends France and it goes for 20 euros. There's only one problem and that's that the manual and all other instructions are in French. I put the manual through an online translating service, link in the description, and now I have a version that is mostly in English. It's not perfect, but it should be enough to get me over the line. Let's have a look at what we get with our kit. As well as a mounting screw and some DuPont connectors, we have several leads for wiring this up. This offers versatility for installation on a range of 3D printers. The main hardware is strapped to this foam to protect it, and yes, this magnet is meant to be loose sitting on top. The actual probe has a 3D printed cover and suspended inside that is a magnetic ball bearing. On the PCB underneath we have what I think is an optical sensor and we can see the metal pin in the middle when it travels up and down will trip that switch. To let the pin drop so we can take readings, when we home we mount the larger magnet to the left and that allows the probing pin freedom to drop down, make our readings and then when we're finished probing we simply need to drop the hot end down low enough for the magnet to retract the probe. Here is the entire system in action. As the printer homes, the large magnet pulls up the ball bearing, the pin drops down, and now when it touches the bed, it will trip the optical switch during the auto bed leveling probing. Looks pretty novel, hey? And I really appreciate the lateral thinking that's gone into developing this innovative solution. We're gonna start our install guide by looking at the printed parts and the rest of the physical install. In the manual, there's links to STLs for mounting on a CR10 or Ender 3. Although I don't have a standard printer anymore, this is how it's meant to work. You need to remove your metal fan shroud and then insert an M3 nut onto the back of the part. It then gets trapped against the metal body and you put through a small countersunk M3 screw and secure that from the back with another M3 nut. The idea is that the printed part is rigidly mounted on the outside but the nut on the inside is free to travel up and down. You use the supplied screw, locate it into the nut and then when the whole thing is bolted back to the printer, you should be able to slide the Touch Me probe up and down so you can adjust it to leave a 2 to 2.5 millimeter gap between the nozzle touching the bed and the tip of the probe when retracted. After this adjustment, it's tightened in place. Now I'm running a Hero Me, previously with the BL Touch, so my first step is to remove that mount. Fortunately, the Hero Me has an option to mount a Touch Me, but I needed to explore other options because it sat the probe too far above the nozzle. Once I located the correct part, I inserted an M3 nut behind it and then mounted it back on the carriage just as before. The M3 screw that came with the Touch Me kit wasn't quite long enough, so I used a longer one which secured the Touch Me probe to the carriage and when I tested the offset with the nozzle touching the bed, I found that I had the perfect 2.5 millimeter gap. Your results may vary, so check out all of the links in the description. When mounting the strong magnet on the left, I again needed to explore several options. The one linked in the instructions for the Touch Me protruded too far with my Hero Me mount and therefore the printer wouldn't be able to home. The other ones I have linked in the description were pretty much perfect and they're adjustable to boot. To fit them, you need to undo the two screws on the right hand side of the cover, except I found that the bolts were no longer long enough to reach in, so I had to use some M3 by 50mm bolts which were too long, so I used some small spaces to secure everything tightly. You can see that when I home it, the magnet is pulled up and the pin is free to drop down as the carriage moves away to start probing. Next up is wiring, and it's important to plug in the long set of wires so that the red one is facing the left when looking at the front of the probe. Here's how I routed my wiring loom. I ran it underneath my extruder and cable tied it up and around the existing wiring loom down and I entered it into the control box where the Z end stop wires usually enter. If you've already upgraded to an MKS Gen L like I have, installation is simply a matter of unplugging the factory end stop wiring 
taking the cable from the Touch Me kit that's completely white and plugging in one end, and then reading the labels on the board to match up 5 volts signal and ground and plugging in the long lead. If you've still got the factory mainboard however, things are a little bit more complicated because the all white cable is too wide to plug in. Instead, we need the other small connector as found in the Touch Me kit and we need to use a pick or a small screwdriver to lift up the tabs on one end. After you've done this, you'll be able to pull out the insides and then reinsert the single DuPont connectors that came with the kit. Our short loom now has three single female connectors on one side, ready to plug into the main board. The black and the yellow are going to plug into the Z end stop plug as shown. You might need some hot glue to stop them wobbling loose. And the red 5 volt source is going to come from the pin closest to the USB connector on the in circuit programming header. Your final job is to get a ruler and measure the distance between the probe from left to right and front and back compared to the nozzle. Now that might have looked like a bit of a hassle, but remember I was going through lots of parts to try and find the correct ones. Once you know what you need for your printer, this should be quite straightforward. And it should be noted that that wiring is simplified over a BL touch, so if you're on a Creality printer, you don't need to spend the extra money on the pin 27 board. Let's continue our install by looking at the required firmware changes in Marlin. And a reminder that if you're on an Ender 3, you will need to burn a bootloader first and also have a copy of the Marlin source that you can edit. First up, we're going to test our wiring. If we have our probe up and then use a program like Pronterface to connect via terminal and USB, when we type in M119, it should say the Z min is triggered. If we now manually lower the probe and run the same M119 command, it should now say that the Z min is open. If this is what you get, we're ready to do firmware. Here we are in Marlin 119. And the steps I'm about to follow are from the Touch Me instructions, and they should apply to N3 with the standard board, N3 with the MKS Gen L, Artillery X1, pretty much any printer. I'm going to do most of our changes in configuration.h, so we'll switch to that and we'll go Control F to find. And the first thing we're going to search for is Z underscore min underscore probe. We want to go down to we hit the Z probe options section. For me, it's already uncommented, but you need to double check that Z min probe uses Z min end stop pin is uncommented. Next, we're going to search for fix underscore mounted underscore probe. We're going to delete the two forward slashes on the end to remove the comment, and now this is defined. Next, we're going to search for X underscore probe underscore offset. We have this handy diagram here, and I measured mine to the left and the front, which means I'm going to have negative values for each and I measured minus 42 for X and minus 14 for Y. Now we're going to search for Z underscore homing underscore height. We have our target line and we need to do two things. Firstly, we need to uncomment this. Secondly, we need to raise the value from four or whatever yours is up to 20. We'll now search for auto underscore bed underscore leveling. We get to a section with all of the options we can choose and we're going to uncomment the middle one, define auto bed leveling by linear. I've scrolled down a little and by default it does a three by three grid. They're recommending putting that up to five so we'll follow their instructions. By default where the grid is probed is set automatically but I like it to be symmetrical which means it's in the center of the bed instead of being biased to the left or the right. So to do this, we're going to uncomment these four lines. And instead of it being set to min probe edge, which was by default set to 10, I'm going to set a value a little bit bigger than the offset of my probe. So that was 42. So I'm going to make it 45, just three mils extra. And then I'm once again going to replace this with 45. At the front and rear, my offset was minus 14. Because a lot of people have bed clips there, I'm actually going to increase this to 20. And now all of the probing should be symmetrical. Now we're going to search for Z underscore safe. We're going to locate that and delete the two forward slashes to uncomment it and enable it. Now it's not in the instructions, but something I definitely like to do is to switch to configuration underscore ADV and search for baby. Baby stepping in the newest Marlins will already be on, but I greatly prefer to uncomment baby step Z probe offset. 
That means that after we're finished baby stepping to get the perfect first layer, we can simply store the settings to EEPROM and that same starting height will be set up ready for the next print. One more thing, it takes forever to scroll if the multiplicator is one, so I like to change that to 10. That should be everything that we need, so we can select our board, our port and then upload. If you're on Ender 3 and you get errors for running out of room on your flash memory, this table should help you decide what you can disable. There's definitely slightly less steps involved than setting up a BL Touch in Marlin, and we're also close to printing, we just need to do our final calibration. So we need to adjust our start G code, and to do that, after the G28 for homing, we add G29. With the BL Touch, that'd be the end of it, but there's one more command we need straight after. We need to add a G1Z0.5. This will move the nozzle down to the bed close enough so that the probing pin is pushed up and held back in place by the magnet. The SDL for this X I provide to my patrons, but you could make it in Tinkercad in about one minute. You scale it down to be one layer thick and you scale it wider to take up most of the bed. When the print starts, we can see it properly in action. When it comes to home, the magnet pulls the ball up, which drops the pin, and then when it goes to the middle, you'll see the pin rise, block the optical sensor, and then it can get on with the probing after that. It does it in a five x five grid, and when it's finished with the ABL, it follows our command to lower right down, which retracts the pin, ready to print. On your LCD, you need to go to control, motion, probe Z offset, and then adjust the Z offset until you have the perfect amount of squish on your first layer. Generally, this is achieved with a negative Z offset. Once you're happy with this, go back to the control menu on the LCD and then store the settings. They'll be retained for your next print. You're aiming for the part to stick, but to peel off easily, yet still have all the individual extrusions bonded together nicely. Now normally with the auto bed leveling, once you reach this stage, you're ready for some happy consistent printing. But there was a bit of movie magic there, so we need to rewind and examine some of the issues that I had. The first problem is inherent to this design, and any print that you have that's really wide is going to bring the print head really close to the magnet and then deploy the pin. For me, that happened in the corners of my X and led to this. Ouch. The only solution I can see is to remove the left hand magnet and manually pull down the pin at the start of every print or homing. And if you forget to pull the pin down, it will never lower and you'll start printing a long way up in the air. My next problem came with accuracy and repeatability. You can see on this first X test print, everything was great except for the lower rear corner. In that corner, the nozzle was way too close to the bed. I repeated my test, and this time the corners were not too bad, but in the middle of the print, the nozzle was way too far from the bed, and it just wasn't sticking. The end result is probably what you would expect, and was quite baffling. Maybe I would have better luck the third time around. Well, unfortunately it didn't improve. This time the front and the middle of the X was pretty good, but the right rear corner was far too close, and this time the left rear corner was too close as well. This was the same test repeated three times with the same filament and G-code with three very different results. And really this variation is what we're trying to eliminate by fitting auto bed leveling. Now perhaps I could try and increase the accuracy by slowing down the probing and other conservative measures, but the point stands to be made that I've never had to do that on any other auto bed leveling system that I've reviewed on this channel. It's a shame too, because I spent a fair amount of time developing a mounting system for the Sidewinder X1, but now I don't think I'm gonna do that and I'm just gonna put on a BL Touch like most of my other printers. It's possible with the translated instructions that I've done something wrong, so please let me know in the comments if you've had a better experience with this. If there's something little, I'll add a pinned comment of my own. If there's something major, I'll film an updated video. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.